Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So today what I want to do is take apart one of these early 2000s style CD players. A lot of us had them and you will find them a lot on garbage day. Now especially because CD players and CDs are becoming obsolete. And although they do look like they have a lot of plastic on them, you don't want to pass them up because they are loaded with great scrappable material. There's going to be a really nice heavy transformer in there that's loaded with number two copper. There's going to be some aluminum heat sinks, other aluminum pieces, lots of tin and brass and other scrappable items. So what I'm going to do today is take one apart, show you how to identify the material, and more importantly, maximize your profit and divert as much of this away from the landfill as possible. So the first thing I do want to address is a question I had from someone, and that was, when I look at electronics uh, at the side of the road, how do I know that it's going to have good scrappable material? And for me, one of the good ways is looking at weight. This one actually weighs 26 pounds as is, so I know there's going to be a lot of tin in there, uh, and I know just from experience with these types of electronics, there's going to be tin with in or in form of transformer, so definitely going to be some scrap value in this. And the other nice thing about electronics, and I will take all of them, is because regardless of what's inside of them, they are 100% scrappable at a scrapyard. I can bring them in whole and get electronic weight price. So any types of speakers and other items, the scrapyard will pay you by weight. And electronic weight price is about five to six cents a pound uh, in Sarnia, Sarnia Ontario, uh, in Canadian funds. So that is definitely a good thing. And as I said, this one actually weighs 26 pounds as is. However, you definitely want to make sure you open it. Given the weight, you know you're going to make more money from the scrap separating the items. As I said, with having a large transformer in here, those transformers are going to have number two copper inside of them. And number two copper is right now going for about $4.43 a pound. And any scrapper uh, in the or scrapper's terms, any type of copper, is our scrapper's gold. So gonna go ahead and look at one. For the sake of time, I have already removed some of them. This is one of my styles. Um, the face plate here is plastic, so unfortunately this is gonna go into the landfill. You do also wanna check the side panels. I've removed it on this one. Sometimes your side panels will be made of tin. This is non-magnetic, so this is plastic. Uh, if it was magnetic and it was tin, tin right now is going for about seven to eight cents a pound. Uh, it's actually going for 14 cents a pound in London, Ontario, but seven to eight cents right now in Sarnia. But still, that is still a great price. Um, just taking the tops off of here. This one, you can see a really beautiful uh, transformer here. Here is a really nice circuit board that I have here. Some tin shred on the sides here. But look at that copper spool even on these circuit boards. That, that's going to all be number two copper. Uh, as well, I do want to hold off on this circuit board to address another question uh, and another upcoming video I had from a couple people that are just beginning with circuit boards. Given the age of this circuit board, uh, especially if you are into micro scrapping, there is going to be items on here that are also potentially worth your while. Um, these ceramic capacitors, for example, these little orange guys right here that you see my hand on. The older they are, more likely chance of precious metals. Um, my rule is, or a rule that I've researched is when you take those off, if you collect them, if you put a magnet to them and they are non-magnetic, they're gonna potentially have more precious metal. The ones that are magnetic are not gonna have the precious metal. So again, that all depends on if you're a micro scrapper um, and also looking at different things on circuit board. So I am gonna save this one for another video. I am going to look at this one here because I've already taken it apart. Same style. The first thing I definitely want to do is take off my appliance cord. So these appliance cords, I had it on both, obviously. Going to just cut it first. Okay, both pieces here. It is underneath connected. But this appliance cord right now, if I look at this, this is going for, this is going to be classified as 40% appliance wire. And the reason this is classified as 40% appliance wire is if I take it up to the camera, 
you can see inside there are two strands of copper. They are individually coated. You got one that's white, one that's black. And they also have an additional outer coating. Because there is two coatings of plastic on this, the scrapyard will give you 40% appliance weight. Uh, there is another category for appliance cords called 60%. And the way that the scrapyards look at it is plastic to copper ratio and copper recovery. This has two layers of plastic, which means more plastic, less copper recovery. So 40% appliance wire. And currently this is actually going for about $1.26 a pound in London, Ontario, which is an excellent price considering appliance cords you will find on all types of different electronics than appliances um, when you're scrapping. Um, and you do want to make sure you separate it. If this was just two of those cords right there that did not have the outer coating on it, the last layer, this would be a higher value and would give me 60% appliance wire. And that is currently going for $2.15 a pound. So definitely a big difference between the two, but both of them at an excellent price. So definitely want to make sure this goes into my 40%. Some people will take the prongs off of that. These prongs are brass. They will put them into their brass, which is currently going for about $3.50 a pound Canadian. Some people leave them on for the weight. Um, I do take them off, but it is entirely up to you. But I definitely want to make sure I caution, separate your 40% with your 60% as you scrap. Don't wait till the end when you're going to the scrapyard. I made that mistake a couple years ago and it took me a couple hours to separate it. So 40% appliance wire. This one, I'm just going to cut it just to see. This one is also, again, has the outer coating with the two inner coatings. So again, this is also 40%. Um, but again, great price at $1.35. So here I'm looking at my transformer, my aluminum heat sink. Just gonna take a couple last screws out of here. There is also some really nice tin on here. Uh, and although I will say there is plastic, there definitely is, that is unfortunate. Uh, you can check with your area or municipality. Some places will take heavier plastic. Um, so that is definitely better than going to the landfill. Unfortunately, here where I live, they will not take this. They don't have the um, processing facility to cope with this type of plastic. Uh, but again, it doesn't mean that all of them don't. Okay, so I'm just getting my last couple of screws out of here. Okay, transfer this out I want to make sure there are a couple circuit boards in this one that I do also want to address and look at but here we go okay so a couple little things this right here last couple screws I want to point this out um, there are definitely different metals that come off of your circuit boards uh, and your electronics so you definitely want to make sure you know what is what um, to identify it honestly and separate it properly. But the reason I wanted to take this off is because this has a couple interesting things about it. So here is a circuit board. This circuit board does not have any precious metals on it. This is actually going to be classified as low grade board. Um, some scrap yards, some areas will separate their circuit boards depending on the types of metals on them. Uh, they will classify them as low grade, medium grade, high grade. Uh, unfortunately, the scrapyard I take them to put them as one category. They put them at all uh, e-waste and it all is going to be six to seven cents a pound. So regardless if they have gold on them or not, uh, I'm only getting one price, which means I definitely want to make sure I take off my copper, aluminum, brass, and other great items. And this is one of the good items that you will see. Even though it looks like plastic, any type of aluminum heat sink will have a type of black connector. And the reason this is special is because this connector actually has number two copper inside of it. So all of your aluminum heat sinks do have these little connectors, okay? And they definitely will add up, okay? I'm not going to break this one. But if I hit this with a hammer, it is going to have a little bit of copper in here. As you can see, there is a little bit of glue messiness that I do have to wipe off. But just to show you a point or nail my point home, these are all those connectors 
All of them are number two. You can see different sizes, these little ones here, okay? But all of this is number two copper, and these are gonna give me $4.43 a pound, and I actually have nine and a half pounds in here. So I definitely take these off, store them, and at nine and a half pounds of number two copper here, it definitely adds up. So definitely wanna make sure you get these off, okay? This heat sink here, Again, there are two pieces of metal on here. I definitely have to make sure I sort it, separate it. All of my screws that I'm taking off here, I also throw into my tin. So I always have, when I'm scrapping, a magnet close by. Okay, my magnet will obviously just clean up my screws. Uh, and again, they're gonna give me tin price, okay? But here if I put a magnet to this, you can see this is non-magnetic. This is an aluminum heat sink. And you can see just by the shape of this, okay, this is actually gonna give me another form of aluminum. It classified as extrusion. Extrusion is any type of aluminum that looks like it's been put through a press or a mold, uh, something like this. These are another heat sink style that come out of your computer towers. Notice the beautiful copper ingot in there, and I'm definitely gonna take that out. But extrusion right now is actually going for $1.10 a pound. If this was just a straight piece like this, if it, was, it didn't have the grooves in it, if it was just this piece here, it would be clean aluminum, and that would be going for about 50 cents a pound. So you definitely wanna make sure that you separate your extrusion from your sheet aluminum to get that extra 80 cents a pound. You do also have to make sure you separate them so this is another heat sink off of a larger electronic this is painted black uh, this is obviously clean aluminum uh, al aluminum is uh, metallic in color when it's clean this is colored extrusion it's about two cents less so depending on how much you have uh, you can if you want put them together and you will get the lower price which is the two cents less if you have uh, just a little bit if you have a lot of each you definitely want to separate them because two cents a pound if you have 100 pounds, it definitely adds up. So clean extrusion, painted extrusion. And these, as I said, are aluminum heat sinks. Okay, my transformer, I do have some more tin here, but notice the other circuit board here, there is also a small transformer on that. And there is definitely gonna be some number two copper in here that I wanna take out as well. Uh, some people do throw these into their, um, transformer bins. I don't because, again, I'm going to make more money from my tin than I would from, or sorry, I get more money for the copper than I would for transformer weight. So I do have a video showing you how to open those. Very easy to do and definitely worth it. Here is a relay box. I just pulled the cap off on purpose. Notice there is another spool of copper. And what are interesting about these relay boxes is if I point one this way, I'm gonna just pull that back, you can see the little dot there at the top. That dot is actually silver, and there are two of them there, okay? So these are contact boxes, a little bit of silver that is connected. They still have a little bit of copper on that, but what I will do is I will cut off that little piece of silver, put it into a little vial uh, for my silver recovery. Uh, the rest of that bra or copper is gonna go into my copper, number two copper, as well as this little spool of copper. So it definitely, even though it looks small, it does add up, okay? The rest of this shell, put a magnet to it. Here is some more tin, but I wanna get this transformer. And I actually, I wanna open it for this video just to show you how beautiful this is. Uh, transformers, if I brought this in as is, I'm gonna get uh, about, oh, Transformer weight right now is going for 15 to 25 cents a pound, okay? Um, so that is one option, but in my opinion, again, that copper is definitely worth more. Um, this tin, like I said, this is heavy stuff. I have a load going out tomorrow, so I'm trying to fill my vehicle as much as I can. And because I am not getting much for my e-waste, I can break it like this. The rest of this board, I can still throw into my e-waste to get that five cents a pound. So I'm definitely not losing any money. Uh, I just need to make sure that I can get at my transformer here. Uh, these transformers are a little bit more tricky because they have an outer shell on it or a, a case on it uh, that is welded on there. 
But if I look at my transformer here, there is, as I said, an outer case that protects it. So I am going to have to bend this a little bit to see where my opening is. And if I just bend the top of this just to get at it, that's a little bit more tin. Um, but again, they all vary. Some of them have obviously different designs on it. Just going to try hitting this with a hammer just to loosen it. Okay, so now I'm going to look where my weld is. And the first thing I'm actually going to do, I can see my weld right there. Uh, I just want to open this case up just to fold that out. So I'm just going to use a grinder. Very simple to use, to do. I always have safety glasses on when I do it. But just going to make a small incision to open that. this open I'm just gonna take my a pry bar get a hammer under that get a try and get that edge out okay and I don't think I went enough into it I didn't so just give me a second just didn't break through it. So here we go, my protective shell. I'm just gonna take this off first. So this too is a piece of tin. As you can see, it is obviously magnetic. But now that I have access to my transformer, I'm actually just gonna break that with a hammer just to show you the beautiful copper inside. And to get these little teeth out of the way, I wanna get as much of the circuit board off as I can, just so I can get at my transformer. But notice here, once I break the plastic, you can see some really nice copper inside of that. Look at that beautiful copper. There's a little bit right there peeking through. Okay, so that's gonna be copper. And all I'm gonna do right now is, there is my weld that I can get at. I'm just gonna use my grinder and go down that weld, and it should open up. So give me a second here. Put it in my vise again. Make sure I have my safety glasses on. and a type of punch. Sometimes, where is it? I have this style, oh, there it is. So, very inexpensive tool, but these are great for opening transformers. So I'm just gonna actually put it right between that weld, hit it with a hammer, one hit. Notice that this piece faceplate comes off. It's a little bit warm, so be careful. But here is another nice piece of tin. And I want to address another question I had from someone. They asked, why would this not be steel? And the reason this is not steel is because steel has to be thicker than a quarter inch and it has to be a thick or a, a solid piece. As you can see here, transformers have individual plates. Uh, these are all individual. So this is going to be tin shred. If it was steel, it'd be worth a couple cents more, but not much. Okay, but here is my transformer. Just going to now that it is exposed, just gonna turn it back there and just gonna use my punch again and just hit this out. it does get stuck you can see just has a little bit more to go sometimes you have to just reposition it but de 
definitely worth it. There we go. So there is my copper. Uh, and you can see these transformers, they're just made almost like an E. That's why I have to take that one weld off because once that weld is cut, it just folds out. But look at how beautiful that copper is, okay? And all I'm actually gonna do is just kind of slide it out of here. That's kind of the other reason why I need to knock these little pieces off because this is now just gonna start coming out like an accordion. Look at that, beautiful. Beautiful, 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 okay? And all of this is going to give me number two copper, just to show you as well, because sometimes now people will look at copper and assume that it's copper just because it's nice and bright and shiny, but you definitely, the best test is the scratch test. If I put a file to it, you can notice really beautiful copper right there, okay? And another question I had from someone, was why would this not be bare bright? Bare bright has to be thicker than 16 gauge, which is the thickness of the lead of a pencil. All of these strands are less than 16 gauge. And the other reason is because they do have tape on them and glue. So doesn't matter how shiny this is, it all first deals with thickness. Uh, and again, these are definitely not thicker than 16 gauge. So no matter, number two copper, I am not going to complain because I'm going to probably have almost a pound of copper in this. I have tons of tin now that I have. I have a little bit of plastic obviously in here. Uh, some of them like this one, if I look at the bottom, there is going to be, especially when I start opening up the shelves, there will be a couple little small motors in here. Um, and I will show you a motor. These motors, I do not keep these little motors. Okay, these will turn the uh, discs, they will turn the um, CD changer. Uh, these I will just throw into my copper bearing motors like this, and I will get 15 to 20 cents a pound for this. So definitely, these are worth it. I have, as I said, a larger transformer here, so I'm probably gonna get a pound and a half to two pounds of copper out of here. Definitely better than passing it up. Definitely better than bringing it in whole and getting electronic weight price. Very easy to take apart. So definitely don't pass those up. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you again for the continued support and the questions. I will do my best to answer those. Uh, look forward to uh, growing as a, a community, this channel in this upcoming 2023 year. So thank you again to all the support and watching. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tim Man out.